Hey, good morning, my folks. About to share some breakfast with you guys. We got eggs. We got sausage. And you know what's next. Got some Doritos. Spicy ones. Cheetos. Two of these bad boys. Which I done prepped and ain't half ready. Let me get this ready for you guys. I'm not really good at the filming yet, so you guys ain't gonna be able to see the goodness go down right now. You know, my little film buddy's at work. She got a job at Samark, so she thinks she's real slick now. But we don't get that discount yet. Pissed. <clears throat> so talk to me, guys. H happy Thanksgiving. Hope you guys all had a blessed one. Mine was very good. Got the grub. Grubbed a lot. Telling you, man, I wait all year for that. Whoop, about to put the sausage. Man, I ate so much, bro. When I went to work, it was a wrap. Lazy as heck. So what you guys gonna do for your New Year's? I got a couple resolutions I'm gonna do. You know, one of them is like, talk more with you guys, put more workouts out there so we can bless the world with some strength and some knowledge and discipline. Cause you get that when you work out, especially when you're doing long burpee counts. Get in that zone, man. You're in a different world. All my burpee guys out there, keep it up. Big Wolf be tearing the burpee game up. I'll be back in it. But like I tell you guys, when you do your burpees, bro, count. Because if you ain't counting and you ain't feeding that muscle, the blood, then you ain't going to get big. You ain't going to get ripped and you're going to look all cool and shit like you're getting it. But if I go there and we do a routine together and I do my full counts, you're going to die. Trust me, because you weren't paying attention and you weren't doing the counts. Big homie got me like that. As a matter of fact, her uncle got me like that. Sleepy. And the whore I hear at Bob Wiley's at our county jail room, we work out and then do it on the tier. But I mean, you're single side, but you count on the tier. So they'd be like, all right, first workout, 122 count burpees. And then they count it down. And but I was over there reading. <laughs> and then, um, Maybe like two months into that, my little routine where I read and sometimes I skip my workout, a big homie called me out. The, the fucking cop in the morning was like, hey, um, Ainsworth, get ready, you're gonna go to the yard. And I told her, nah, I'm gonna use the phone today, it's my day room. She's like, nah, uh, I don't wanna say his name, but Sleepy said you're gonna go to the yard with him. So I was like, oh man, I already knew it was wind check time. And I did, I got wind check. We started out with the 120, we were doing our chapters, and it was um, five on five. You start with a 122 counts, and then you do um, 100 count standings, and then 118 counts, and then you go all the way down, so on and so forth. So when I we did, the, I got I finished 122, all proud, Ooh, getting it. Bam, we did some jumping jacks after, and then next thing you know, hit the started hitting 18 counts, and I was going out. Ooh. And he was looking at me like, "Hey, bro, you haven't been doing your workouts?" And I told him, "Why? What do you mean?" And he was like, "Because you're gassing out at 100, and you're barely at 118." You know. And I was like, he's like, don't lie to me, bro. And I was like, yes, sir. I, you know, I've been skipping them and shit. I've just been, um, I'll stay on track, brother. And he was just like, oh, you never said that. You said you've been completing your workouts, so you're not going to be on track. And this is the term, getting broke off. I've never been broke off before because I never even knew what it was. Never, never did I allow myself to get it again. That's why you guys see me doubling up my workouts. Boom. Full plate. Chips. Cheetos. The eggs, the sausage. Wash my hands real quick. Well, back to the story. Um, Jesse was like, um, there's gonna be no getting on track. He's like, um, down. Woo, woo, did his 18 counts, came up, and I went down, boo. I was doing it, Alvis. Now he just, and I kept doing it. I finished it, bro. I completed the whole workout, but halfway through, I was already throwing up in the corner, and I was like, can I stop, man? I'm sick. And he's like, nope. He's like, you don't stop, machines don't stop. You're supposed to be working out. You didn't do your workouts, now you're gonna get it. Now I'm not, bro, I'm not trying to break you to uh, hurt you or to offend you. I'm trying to break you down to build you up and make you stronger, brother. So down. You know, uh, I was pissed at first because I was dizzy and I couldn't even move. I mean, I said uh, I couldn't, well, I was dizzy. And I was like, hey bro, I'm, I apologize and shit. I should be, I, I need to take more, um, the workouts more serious and the whole program more serious. I know I'm gonna be a lifer, and I know you guys tell me this all the time. And I'm finally gonna do it. You know, 
after being humiliated by the by you today. I know you weren't your intentions weren't to humiliate me, but you humiliated me. You broke me off. You made me throw up. And that right there changed my fucking life. Literally, never did I half ass or half ass anything because that feeling was the worst to sit there and look at that they had the homie. Especially a big homie and a fucking straight NF for man. You ain't trying to disappoint them guy. You're trying to do everything you can. He's a he's a demigod. I'm trying to do anything to please this man, which is it's fucked up to think about it like that, but it's true. And Jesse's a fuck I mean sleep is a G, bro. He was my sponsor and shit. One of them, but a good guy. But yeah. Uh, dude, that was the worst getting broke off. But so the moral of that story is when, you, when they call the workouts, you listen. You do your counts because when they every single count is it affects it. And if and if you don't do them, then you're gonna get it. So here it goes, guys. Ooh, I don't know how to do it up close. Bam. Ooh, if you guys can smell that shit, whoo! Well, if I can get it right now, once. I'm at 175, lost all that weight. I'm gonna start doing some workouts for you guys. I've been doing a lot of work. Oh, by the way, we're not in um, we're not in the North Bay no more. We got transferred to Sonora recently. Woohoo! Two hours away, two and a half hours away from Tulare County, baby. Mmm. Oh. Man, the sauce would be hitting in that. In the egg. You guys gotta try it though. Good lord. Mm. Well, my spray to use out there, you know what time it is when that's just bomb. Every fucking bite. Amazing. Um, oh, you guys have been reading again. As I stopped for a little bit because I've been hella busy, but now uh, after work, we'll go and chill. And I'll read. I have reading time. I wake up around five and get up early. So my bunkie, the Marine, sleeps. I gotta let my devil dog get his rest. <clears throat> mm. Here's what's been going down, my guys and my girls. Trip out. Okay. I don't know if I'm... Uh, I told you guys I'm in a high fantasy. I just finished um, The Night of Seven Kingdoms by uh, George R. R. Martin. It's with the... Uh, it's the Fire and Ice uh, series. Ooh, that's sick. Talks about egg and the West Earls way before. It says, taking place nearly a century before the events of a Game of Thrones. A Night of the Seven Kingdoms compiles the first three official prequel novellas to George R.R. R. Martin's ongoing masterwork, The Song of Ice and Fire. These never before collected adventures recount an age when the Targaryen line still holds the Iron Throne. And the memory of the last dragon has not yet passed from the living consciousness. Ooh. Daenerys Stormborn, okay, before Tyrion Lannister and Podrick Payne, there was Duncan A. A young but naive, a young naive but ultimately courageous hedge knight, Sir Duncan the Tall, towers above his rivals, a stature if not experience. Tagging along in his diminutive squire, a boy called A, whose true name is hidden from all, he and Duncan counter. Bro, I remember this too. Um, when you get to the wall, and um, I think book four of Ice and Fire, they talk about the, ma the maester that's right there, I and mean, that's fucking A. Though more improbable heroes may not be found in all of Westeros, great destinies lay ahead of these two, for these two, as do powerful foes, royal intrigue, and outrageous exploits. Woo! Very good read. Fucking loved it. And then the other day, 
more strong through Target, I found this one. Whoopie. Fire and Blood. It's talking about um, the same stuff. It says centuries before the events of A Game of Thrones, Fire and Blood is the first volume of George R. R. Martin's definitive two-part history of the Targaryens and Westeros. It begins with the legendary Aegon the Conqueror, creator of the Iron Throne, and goes on to recount the generations of Targaryens who fought to hold that iconic seat all the way up to the Civil War that nearly tore their destiny apart. Whoop. This essential chronicle is related, as related by a learned maester of the Citadel, features more than 80 black and white illustrations by artist Doug Wheatley, including five all-new illustra illustrations exclusive to this paperback edition. With Fire and Blood, readers will gain a fresh appreciation for the dynamic, often bloody, and always fascinating his history of Westeros. Whoop. Pick, I copped that, my folk. See, motherfuckers spend their money on diamonds and rings and shit. I get books. I get shit that lasts knowledge forever is power. Remember that. I'd rather have these badass books. And then I went and bought this. <clears throat> R.A. Salvatore, one of my favorite guys. Um, uh, It's about the Dark Elf trilogy and series. It's got Dritz de Erden and his dad. One well, talks about his dad. Zach and African. Okay, trip out. Centuries ago in the city of Menzo Barazan, the city of spiders, the city of Dro, nestled deep in the unmerciful underdark of Toro, a young weapon master earned a reputation far above his station or that of his poor house, Zakanafin. The greater nobles watched him and one powerful matron, Malice, decided to take him as her own. She connived with rival houses to, kiss, to secure her prize, but it was ultimately the roguish mercenary Jarl Axel who caught him. Thus sparked the birth of two key moments in Menzo, Bar Menzo Baron history. The coupling of a noble and, we and a weapon master that would produce Dritz de Erden and the friendship between Zach and Affin and Jarl Axel. R.A. Salvatore reveals the Underdark anew through the eyes of this unlikely pair, offering a fresh take on intrigue and opportunities to be found in the shadows and providing a fascinating prelude to the journeys that have shaped the modern day Forgotten Realms. And as Zach and Affin and his son Dritz will be joined together in a series of trials that parallel those of centuries long past. Woo this was This was the shit. Even though their past no longer seem to be aligned, how will a father so long constrained by the vicious and consecutive society of the drove be able to reconcile his ungained prejudices with the world and companions of his enlightened son? Because Dritz went above ground when he got a, a, a regular woman, not an elf. The answer lies in the, their desire for peace over chaos. And as long as the scrooge, the scrooge of the goddess Los ambition still remains, both father and son are determined to keep her dark, at, dark will at bay. But the Spider Queen is powerful, and now demons have been unleashed on the unwitting denizens of the, of the surface world. United in purpose and through their mutual friendship with Jarl Axel, Zach and Effin and Dritz will need to put aside their differences in order to keep the ones they love safe. <laughs> Boom! Shit! You guys gotta start reading out R.A. Salvatore. I'll show you guys what's next right now. Okay, hey guys, I've never read this before. Woo -woo. Gulliver's Travels. I've always heard about it, but about to get down in. Eh? I already started it. I started this one, and I started... This little gem I found. This Louis L'Amour book. Woo Love Louis L'Amour. I started this one already. I'm almost done. This is with the Sackett, the Sackett series. I love the Sackett family, bro. But in a ride dark trail, Lewis Lamar tells the story of Logan Sackett, a cynical drifter who changes his ways to help a widow keep her land. Whoop. Logan Sackett is wild and rootless, riding west in search of easy living, and he meets fam then he meets Emily Tellen, a fiery old widow who is even wilder than he is. Tall and lean, Emma's determined to defend herself against the jealous locals who are trying to take her home. Logan doesn't want to get involved until he finds out the M was born a Sackett. Yes. M is bucking M is bucking overwhelming odds, but Logan won't let her stand alone. For even the rebellious drifter knows that part of being a Sackett is backing up your family when they need you. Fuck yeah. Dude, Lewis and Martin's a shit. But the Sackett family is hardcore, man. I always consider myself a Sackett. Okay, here we go. I'll shut up. Back to Grubbin. Mmm. Mm, bro. Uh, 
Gotta put some carbs in. So how's everything going, man? You guys talk to me. I get a couple of haters on here. I'm still bringing up shit. But it's, it's kind of crazy about what happened to that fool Savage, though. Ruined his whole shit out here just talking about other people's business. And I tell you guys, that's why you don't catch me out here too much. You might get yourself in the wreck like the fucking dude. Thought he was this shit and ended up getting shit on. It's fucked up, man. He should have just kept it legit and stuck to himself and did his thing out here like the rest of us. Since that other video I posted in the car, fucking at my 30, what? With my per diem and stuff, I'm at $37 an hour now because I've been steady working, steady doing it up like you're supposed to. I love, I love to spend all my time talking to you guys. But in the real world, you can't be a one-trick pony. I do everything, plumbing, concrete, like I told you. And I can't just do videos. What kind of man would I be? I'm gonna be that man when I buy my own house. I'm so great, I can fix it. I don't have to call some dude to come fix it for me. I do it myself. That's why I, I try to learn everything. But I am going to feel more. I'm going to be doing 50 hours up in Sonora. Excuse me, guys. Pepsi the dough. Bro, bro, I drink like two of these a day sometimes. Gotta keep on them. Man, I lose a lot. I lose a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of calories and muscle. Well, not muscle, but calories and shit. We're um, climbing. Woo! It ain't no pussy job, I can tell you that. My career. Remember, we're back to Queen Union, baby. Local 1245, where you at? Electrical Brothers. Yeet, yeet. Dipping Brotherhood now. Mmm. Oh, fuck. Never get tired of that. I don't know why, but homies are called out a taco no matter what. Bread, tortilla, a fucking taco, eh? You want a taco with me? But like, homie, that's a fucking piece of bread, huh, boy? It ain't no fucking taco. Come on, me, fucking taco, eh? So I'm like, fuck it, gotta not shoot the taco, huh, boy? <laughs> now I tell people, hey, you want a taco with me? I'm trying to do it. Get a taco, eh? Yeah, that's funny. The price of the work be tripping out on us. We hit him with stuff like that. Ooh. All right. We're almost there, guys. We're taking that two soup spreader down. By the way, I put two soups, three eggs, four sausages, a handful of chips, a handful of Cheetos. Um, two. I'll do four pieces of bread with it. A Pepsi, and then half of this. And we'll call that breakfast. And I'm gonna go out in the yard. I'm gonna go chill with my baby, with the bro with the American Bulldog Bruiser. Chill with the boy for a bit. Start prepping for work already, man. <clears throat> I just thank God that he gave me a strong back and a smart mind because I continue to read. I mean, the streets are hard, but I'm, my folks, I'm telling you, straight, I'd be depressed. Sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night and just be standing there. Well, I'll, I'll wake up and I'll have to stand in the fucking hallway or something and just chill right there and just watch over Miranda or something, just chill. Like, 
I can't sleep sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I wake up and something's on my chest trying to hold me down. Has anyone ever felt like that? Can you, can you guys tell me? Can you tell me about how what's going, what I'm going through? Sometimes I just wake up like, oh, like I'm spooked, like I'm something's evil like on my chest, and I don't know what it is. I thank you guys all for your feedback on my last video. You know, we are friends and shit, we reconcile. That's no big deal. Life moves on, like I said. I focus on my work, I focus on me. As I've been cutting it up, I'm gonna start busting down for you guys again. Show you everybody what time it is with the real Burpee King. It's not about repetitions and doing a million burpees, it's about doing fucking right burpees. You don't even have to do 50, as long as you do fucking 40 right. You're gonna be beating those dudes that do 100. Trust me. Cause when you go over there, I'll slick and bust out the count out of them. Woo! Like my boy. I've been training with him. He's a fighter out here. Him and his brother, the Valencias, and our, they're our general foreman. Well, they both fight out here in the 559 five, fights, and I've been training Alex with the burpees. And he said he went into the gym and started fucking knocking fools around like nothing. And then he started leading the routine, started making them bust down in there. Another gym in Farmersville supposed to be the shit. Got him on track. Got their wind on track. Got their strength on track. That's in the show. I mean, you could, anyway, most people are good fighters, but man, when you get that burpee strength, that, ooh, excuse me, guys, and that burpee win, woo, -hoo, the KO in them, why do you think the homies call it 10 to 1? We take out 10, take out, we take out one of ours, we take out 10 of yours. During a battle, we fight, we try to go for 10. We may have any long odds, but fuck it. You gotta have a strong will. My will to survive is too strong, man. Look at that. I'm almost at 40 bucks out here right now. I just want you guys to know. You know, fucking... Don't let nothing bring you down out here in society. It's all up on our own heads. Don't let nobody get in your head. Don't give nobody your time that's being disrespectful to you and not showing you the respect that you give them. Because remember, everything we put out in this world, something comes back in. Every action has a reaction. So when you're being disrespectful to people, then hey, <clears throat> don't expect to be fucking treated all legit and cool. When you treat people with respect how you want to be treated, you'll be legit. Bro, I open doors for people. I do everything. I say thank you. I say yes, ma'am, to the point where they're like, don't call me that. I'm not old. But I'm still, yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry. I may get mad. It's just something that I do. So you guys remember that. Don't let no one get in your head. Come, just stay out here and live life to the fullest. No, where no one's promised tomorrow. None of that shit. Like I say all the time, man, God bless me. Then second life, third life, basically. I'm out here doing good. I love you guys. I love everybody equally. We're all the same. Ain't no one better than nobody. Fuck a skin color. We're all humans. Remember that. Everybody's equal. Everybody should stand for equality, not just a certain race. Because there's races out here that make fucking millions of dollars. Millions. Of fucking rappers and shit. You don't see them fucking flooding our people with money. We could get three of those fucking rappers. I'm going to say black rappers. And those black rappers can take care of all the black matters lives. All the black people could be fucking fed. through three or four billionaire rich fucking blackers. Black rappers, bro. So all lives matter. And if your people are what you think. If you want your people to be fucking looked at more professionally. Or more of however you want to be seen equal. Hey, put your money on your people, man. Take your people out the gutter if you see them out there. Don't sit there and fucking rap about drugs and fucking chains and shit. Rap about saving your people. Rap about fucking taking your people off chains. Taking the yokes off your people. Taking the chains off your folks. Not putting chains on your own self. You guys are chaining yourselves down, man. Take care of your people. Don't fucking let the government keep fucking talking shit. separate you guys, segregate you guys, anybody, whatever race, put it down for your people, man. 
Don't say you're gonna, don't cry about something that you're not really, really down to go do. Because when they say they're gonna go ride and shit like that, man, you better be ready to ride or hold it down. That's why I just keep my mouth shut. I just let you guys know right now. As a per, as my own opinion, hey man, if you guys really thought about it and you fucking get all the millionaire people together, take care of your people, man. Take care of your fucking people. Stop wasting your money on fucking drugs and, and chains and gold and shit, because that shit ain't nothing. Feeding your people and watching your people happy is fucking something. You don't see me out here fucking doing that shit. I'm not a millionaire or no big time rapper, but I make good money. And what I spend my money on, nothing. Either I save it or I take care of my people, my family, whoever needs it. Pay my bills, my, pay my fucking taxes, buy my books. And I help my people, bro. Whether it's my family or not. If there's homies out here, friends, I feed them. And if you guys got people out there, you should feed them, man. Everybody got to eat. Oh. I got to hear some new music, man. New to me, but not to most. FBG Duck. He just killed him and shit. Um, man, that dude's got some fucking music, man. His rap is solid. FBG Duck, shout out, rest in peace, man. Rest in peace, big homie. It's fucked up, dude. And then King Von. I really started listening to that, man. I took that bitch to the oh, Shot it. Took that bitch to the L, home boy, to the big Lindsay town. Now, I started bumping King Von first. And then I was dissing to, dissing to 63rd Street and all that shit. And then I started listening to the, to the duck. FBG duck is a shit, man. Fucking hell yeah. Is that your bitch over there? I don't care. Dude, that fool's a shit. Man, I, was, I like that that Chicago drill music. That shit's hard, man. I just wish uh, people would stop killing each other, bro. You see these people coming up, man. Let your boy shine. Why you guys take that shine and try to kill him, dude? Two legendary men just got killed. Vaughn was becoming a legend. Duck was already a legend. I, I try to I watched all the videos learning about them, and the gangster disciples and the um, the black disciple. What is it? Gangster disciples and the black disciples. Pretty trippy, man. <clears throat> you guys are legit. More like organization. But yeah, I just, pretty fucking sad, dude. Both those men are very very talented. Talented as fuck, bro. And Duck didn't deserve to die. Neither did Vaughn. Or the other dudes that got killed. Fucking, I barely started listening to Young Pappy and all those fools. Fucking, Chicago's a shit, man. You guys, you guys drill rap. Shit's hard. It's like our Sacramento rap. Kind of Bay Area-ish. Um, Sada Baby. Been bumping that. Skilla Baby. Skilla's a shit. Um, tell me what you guys be bumping. You know I still bump Bay Area. <coughs> CML. Been bumping Lavish D. That fool be on Mozzie's helmet. That's because Mize is a fucking dumbass. He disrespected the fucking the burpee routine. Disrespected the fucking program. Everybody's program, so. That's why people's on his shit. I don't ever bump his music because he sounds dumb to me. <clears throat> <clears throat> I fuck with Average D, though. I fuck with, um, Stunner Blue. Fucking Sibo. Even though some of those guys don't get along. Whoop, whoop. Man, I almost made it. I'm gonna do it, guys. Like what? A little bit there? I'm gonna give it to the Dows. But, um, let me finish this part, man. Hey, thank you guys for eating breakfast with me. I will be putting up another video soon. God bless.